I'm an artist, I'm a painter, printmaker, and a poet, uh, and an instructor. And um, as we figured out last week or the week before, when we had a little teacher thing here, Christy said, actually, Royce has been teaching here longer than you've been here. Yeah. And that kind of shocked me. But it's kind of cool. I really enjoy it. And so today, uh, 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 I was asked to talk a little bit about, well, or a lot maybe, about the high school portfolio uh, program that we have here at Cricket Tree. But I want to, I think I should start by explaining a little bit about me and why, because the way I came up through all of this is why this program resonates with me so strongly, okay, and why I, why I really enjoy it. So uh, let's just get, and I have a slides that will come here as we, as we go. Uh, I was a late bloomer, okay? There's some people, and I've witnessed it now that I've been in this, in this program, some kids that are 14, 15, 16, that can just draw like mad. And I'm like, ah, if I could draw like that when I was your age. But I was a late bloomer, and I, I uh, not that I didn't have art in my life, but my ability to execute, to actually perform the ideas, the concepts I had in my head didn't come till much later. It was a catch-up thing that uh, wasn't much later. I was probably 26, 27 before I like even thought that I should, I was, I was told I should go into art. Finally, at some point there in my mid twenties, things started to click. And even then, when I look back on those drawings, they're kind of tragic. But I was glad that uh, I mean I couldn't I couldn't not do them. That's the thing. And so, uh, as I was growing up, I was exposed to uh, lots of art in my life. My mother uh, was a painter. Uh, and a school teacher. So maybe that's where some of my love of teaching and uh, instructing came from. Uh, but from a very young age, I was taken regularly to uh, art museums and symphony concerts. Uh, we had art books in my home. Um, uh, you know, there was so much creativity in our house, I mean, in, in our house, with making all kinds of things uh, from exotic cooking to uh, making really elaborate school projects. Of course, inspired by my mother. And I was, you wouldn't know it to look at me now, but I was pathologically shy as a, as a young person all the way through high school, actually. Uh, and so I was mortified at these elaborate ideas that my mother would kind of like force me to shoehorn me into these ideas for for projects for school, you know, to give a book report, you know, and I'd show up with boxes of stuff, you know, I'm like, oh. <laughs> but that's what I was brought up in. It's just like, so I guess I kind of thought from the very beginning that anything is possible. Yet, while I was brought up in this environment of extreme creativity and, and, uh, rich experience in the arts. Um, the idea of me becoming an artist, that was not part of the equation. I didn't get it. I didn't, I didn't see that that was possible. It just wasn't available to me. Uh, more than that, I was under the mistaken impression that there were no modern artists. There's nobody creating art now. Uh, you know, it's kind of like all of the artists that, that we know and love from the Renaissance and the Impressionists and that, they are all dead, you know, and that's when it stopped. There was nobody doing, you know, some of us would goof around with it. We like to draw, but there was nobody making art of any sort of importance. Now, that's, I mean, that's just what I had in my, my young brain. Um, and so it just felt like everybody, at, at any time that art was being made, it was like at least a hundred years ago. And as a, as a teenager, hundred years is like, it may as well be 10,000 years, you know? And so um, it really seemed like artists of 
you know, the, the stature of Rembrandt and Van Gogh, they were just like mythical creatures. You know, they didn't, they maybe didn't even really exist. We don't like dinosaurs or something. We don't, how, we don't know really how they came to be. But anyway, that's what art was for me. And so I didn't even think that I could become an artist as a job, as a, as a way of life. I didn't think that. So it, um, I had this mistaken uh, idea. And so I'm here today to tell you that there are modern, modern artists and there's creating many amazing things on all levels from artists creating things that go into museums now to artists that are flying pictures, you know, on the bus. There's all kinds of things that are happening. And as the instructor to the in this program, the Cricket Tree uh, High School Art Portfolio class, um, it's my honor to dispel that rumor if if it indeed still exists among uh, young artists today. And I think it does to some extent, but I'm still I'm still here working to dispel that. Uh, in the end, or rather, I, I should say, in the beginning, I graduated from the American Academy of Art in Chicago. And while art school or university art program is uh, a huge goal and a worthy goal uh, to undertake, anyone that I know that's gone through any of those programs will tell you um, that when they get out, it's just the beginning. They, they're not really prepared for what's what they're gonna have. They experienced a few things, but it's still a mystery to us, you know, as to what we should do. So art school is really only the beginning. When we get out of art school, it's like, this whole big cruel world is out there for us to like try and navigate and we don't really know how we're going to do it so we all are kind of like little moles with a blind eyes kind of scratching our way through the world after art school i oh by the way i graduated in illustration and design and so i thought well that might be a little bit more of a practical way to go through life and so when I graduated, I did all kinds of like little freelance gigs doing like little posters or whatever came my way. Uh, and um, while I was looking for a grown up illustration and design job, and of course coming out of school, you have this like inflated sort of idea that I'm gonna design album covers and rock and roll posters and it's going to be this glamorous sort of lifestyle of like really cool stuff and um there's something equally as cool as an album cover where i ended up was at um a company on the south side of chicago called uniforms to you okay and luckily for me uniforms to you is well not luckily for me about this part Uni uniforms to you is like one of the largest uniform companies in the country. They supply uniforms to giant hotel chains and restaurants and that sort of thing. And so luckily for me, I had this like, I've always had this interest in the figure. And so that led me to having this sort of like little backdoor idea that I wanted to become a fashion illustrator. And so this was maybe my big break. And so let's see here. And this is not from them. This is a, a piece that I did to get that job, all right? Um, but what I did is a long, a long way from illustrations that would be like in an advertisement in Vogue magazine or something, you know, which of course we have these big ideas. Um, but this was my, my big break. And while it was uniforms, at least I could pretend that, well, I was in the fashion industry. I didn't have to pretend that much, but... Uh, but what I ended up doing, instead of something really classy, were these like illustrations for the sales department, you know? So I would do these illustrations. These are kind of fun because they were also selling what the actual fabric. So I would do these illustrations, cut them out, glue the actual fabric that the clothes were made out of behind there. And then I would draw on top of those an airbrush and it was kind of fun, kind of fun. Actually ended up being my first art job 
ended up being the only job that I've ever been fired from. So there we go. It kind of. <laughs> Let me think. Following my stint in the fashion world, in the fashion world, I um, um, joined forces with a, another designer that I went to school with, and we formed a little design uh, design firm, and we ended up doing lots of logos and brochures and all kinds of things for little industrial job shops that are all over the city of Chicago. So there was no shortage of work there, but we did that, and then. As that was happening, I started to make my foray into uh, the, the fine art world. And that came through another uh, big corporation that you all know, McDonald's. And I'll, this is just kind of a quick, funny little story about this. Um, I was just kind of working my way through making brochures and logos and stuff. And a friend of mine who had recently also graduated from another art school said, guess what? And I said, what? And he said, I'm going to McDonald's to show my portfolio to the, to the art buyer of McDonald's. And I go, wow, that's really cool, Carrie. That's really cool. Good for you. And he goes, you want to come with? And I go, really? I'm just going to like come in on your interview? I don't think so. And I thought about it for a second ago. Well, what have I got to lose, you know? And so as an American kid growing up in Chicagoland, like literally a stone's throw from the corporate headquarters of McDonald's, as an American kid with your driver's license and going through drive through at McDonald's, I mean, McDonald's corporate headquarters was like Mecca, you know? They're like, oh. And, uh, and so I walk in like nervous as can be with my portfolio because I'm just, I'm just like bombing this guy's interview and this is up. And so long story short, I walked out of that interview with a commission to do like six paintings. And I was like, wow, this is like, this is like my dream come true. Did lots of crazy things. I was working a lot in airbrush at the time. This is, I don't know what, I don't know when I did this. But it's kind of fun. This is my kid. That's my nephew. This is my niece that I changed her a little bit. But anyway, so it was lots of fun. And they gave me, when I first started working there, a free hand. I could paint whatever I wanted. And so it was really, really great. Here's a few examples. I did funny stuff for like weird, like little inner, uh, inner corporate things. So I don't know, for meetings or book covers or brochure cover, whatever they kind of what I did, everything from this to these these paintings. Um, this actually was the painting of the sign here in uh, Trevor City uh, at the McDonald's that's on Front Street, but this sign's long gone at this point. But so that sort of thing, sorry for the really bad photo. This is way before digital cameras. And this is, I obviously copied a really dirty slide and it's kind of out of focus, but I did all kinds of funny sort of like I did a whole series of these European landmarks, the Eiffel Tower, Venice, that sort of thing. <laughs> so, and McDonald's didn't really care. They just wanted anything that had imagery in it that they could relate to. And okay, and so then I started like getting into like a little bit more creative sort of painterly sort of uh, renditions of, of their, again, sorry, blurry, but, Lots of old cars. They loved old cars. Their old store and new new stores, old old stores, that sort of thing. And this is an interesting story. I don't have the original one. Um, I don't have the original one. This is like this is the story of this. I got to tell you this. It's not really wasn't part of my presentation, but I have to tell you. I did a I did a rendition of this that if you could take out these characters, it was basically this kid. It wasn't this kid, but he was building this castle on this like serene kind of a ethereal beach. This impossible sand castle to build, right? He was just building this and it was hanging in Hamburger U. Yes, there is actually Hamburger U where you can learn to cook hamburgers as a franchise owner. 
uh, and it's a huge complex. I think they've moved from there, but this painting was stolen from from the the residents' quarters. Somebody stole it, and so it's like, well, that's a bummer. Actually, it's a supreme compliment, right? Somebody stole my painting. They have to know who did it, but there nothing came of it. Anyway, they loved that painting, and they said. We want you to paint another one, but times had changed from the one I first paint, painted, and they said we need to have be have it be more inclusive. We need to have lots of diversity in this sort of thing. And so this is actually the second or the third one that I did. I actually kind of almost like this one, but there once it was finished, there was one thing that is creepy as can be about it that Ronald is taking this girl away. It's like, oh man, no, cannot be, can't happen. And so this one I rejected too. I did, like I say, I did a bunch of these trying to recapture that feeling, but the, I, the concept was one child building this thing. And now all of a sudden I've got this community and it just didn't work. This is the one that, this is also a bad photo, but it's the one that ended up being reproduced and they made a bunch of prints. I uh, made, sold hundreds of these, these prints. But now this little child is dragging Ronald into the fun instead of being taken away. Okay, so, <laughs> gosh. So anyway, thank you to McDonald's for this. It's kind of the reason I'm here because I could do this work anywhere. I was 40 years ago, I was working remotely. So I kind of feel like a, a real uh, pioneer as far as what we're seeing these days. But I was re working remotely because FedEx could ship my work anywhere. So once I was here, I started absorbing the, the beauty of nature sort of things. And um, so here's just some uh, watercolors that I had have done and it's really I just well I'll just flip through some of them just because they're old work. Recently I went through a lot of my old work so this is kind of fun to see some of these things. This isn't obviously from here. Uh, but then fast forward uh, literally 40 years and we see some of the work that I'm doing now. Again we see the figure reappearing and uh, colors have changed and uh, it's a little bit more abstract. But again, going back 40 some years, this is an old piece that I found from 79 or something, maybe even 78 or 76. But I look at this and I look at this and I go, they're not very different. When I look at the abstraction of these bottles to this sort of thing, I'm, and it's just been a concept that's been coming across my consciousness, how we have these innate sensibilities in our, in, our, in our creative selves that are just part of us and they will keep resurfacing. And uh, so it's just been, it's been fun for me as an artist to have lived as long as I have to be able to look back and see some of the things that I've done and how they relate to what I'm doing these days. Again, this is a form of printmaking. As I mentioned, I'm a printmaker. And this one also doesn't stray too far from this idea that I have here, this repetitive sort of pattern. Uh, so I appreciate that. And then this is just some, some more stuff that I'm doing right now as far as a printmaker. But I'm not here so much to talk about my work but I had to show you that I actually do make artwork. All right. Uh, and some of it's kind of experimental. You know, the old, um, I'm trying to break the, um, the stereotype that those, that those that can do and those that can't teach, I'm trying to break that stereotype. <laughs> okay. All right. It's kind of a cruel thing that they say, but, but anyway. So let's talk about our program here, shall we? Um, just uh, did a lot of things. This is a third year, as Christy said, that we've been doing the um, this program. 
and it's been quite a journey so far. Uh, we haven't strayed that far from our initial concept, but because as, as was mentioned earlier, not everybody is gonna go to art school and that's totally okay. It really is an okay thing. I, and all of the, the students that have come through the program that have had the opportunity to work with, there's, one, there's a couple common threads uh, about, about them that just impresses me to no end. One is their, you know, their willingness to, to work and to make. You know, they just, um, at such a young age, they just like want to do that. And I relate to that too. As a young person, I just wanted to, to make art. As I said, I wasn't very good at it, but I really liked making it and wanting to do it. The other thing is, is that they're all like full-time students and they go to school all day and then they come here on Tuesday and work for three hours. The group that I have now, uh, Christy so generously says, oh, you guys so you have snacks and pop and all this sort of stuff. The group that I have now, no, we're not stopping. That's how that's how driven they are. I'm like, okay. Sometimes I have to say, sorry, I have to go get a snack, but they keep working. And I just leave the room and go get a snack because they're that driven and that sort of focus really uh, impresses me. And so it's super inspiring to me to witness this desire in their in their work or their work ethic. So what does it take to be an artist? That's a question that a lot of people ask me, and it's kind of a, it's a valid one. It's said that uh, we're all artists when we're young, but that idea just gets squeezed out of us. Well, let's see, I think I, oh, we have a lot, I should, I should, I, sorry, I knew this would be a problem when I did this. And we have a lot of fun at, with these sort of things and just kind of wacky things happen here. But anyway, Picasso said, every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once we grow up. And so, and it really is, it's a challenge because um, lots of things happen. You know, to, the, the urge to create is just innate within us. If you give any child a piece of paper and a box of crayons, they will make all kinds of marks. And we might not be able to tell what it is, but if you ask them, they will tell you all about it. And it's because that desire to communicate and to uh, to create is just is just within us, and I think it's really important that we that we support that. All right. Um, in my class, everyone's an artist. Okay, I just uh, I assume that. Sorry about that. That is really. Uh, um, and so if you're in my class and you're there to learn something, to create art, you uh, don't have to wait any longer to assume that title of artist, okay? You can assume that if you have that desire. And so the statement that I hear very often, when I become an artist, or I wish I was an artist, um, that just kind of is neutralized, that statement. So my role is a, as a teacher in the class, uh, you're gonna be treated as an artist and given the respect of an artist. And this is super important. It's especially um, important to me that I want my students to have this, this sure knowledge if you will, that there are artists and you can be an artist in our, in our day and age. And then to be aware of the possibilities that that will open up for them. Okay, and as we said, not all of them are gonna to go to art school. Um, because quite honestly, uh, and some of you that have gone to art school may know some of your fellow students that you went to art school with, and probably a lot of them aren't working in art, you know, a lot of them aren't. Um, but luckily art is one of those things that we can continue to do, whether you decide to become a lawyer, an accountant, or um, a butcher, a baker, candlestick maker, any of those sort of things. So, um, 
So we, it's a lifelong thing that we can enjoy. Uh, and of course, as we talk about things that get in the way, life can throw lots of things in the way. Some of them good, some of them maybe not so good. And so even if you've chosen art as a pathway, there's gonna be families to raise and lawns to mow and that sort of thing. Um, and so there's, there's a bittersweet comment that I hear often from usually, well, it's always from adults. Um, it's always from adults as they come into a, a class and they'll say, I went to art school, I majored in art, and now it's 30 years later and I haven't created a thing in the last 30 years. And so the sweet part is that they've come back and they're, they, they want to start making again. That's cool. The bitter part is that I realized that they've lived for 30 years with this little voice nagging in the back of their head, make something, make something. And they just keep pushing that away. So that kind of makes me sad. But I'm always glad that they're, they're back to, um, to do that, to keep working. But anyway, we have, I wonder, I'll keep showing this. We have these talented artists here in Traverse City and luckily we've created a very robust opportunity uh, to um, help them access their creativity. Um, the importance of being uh, exposed to new ideas and techniques is that we often have a very narrow view of what's available and, and possible. For example, we might think that painting is the only way to be an artist. I know it was kind of my idea and we already determined, I've explained that I had a very narrow little window that I was looking through because I didn't even think it was possible to be an artist. But so we think painting is the only way. And, Painting is hard, everybody, okay? It just really is, whether you want to think it is or not. And um, it's just not the answer for everybody. Oh, sorry, okay, I'll stop that for a second. This is one of my other students right now doing stuff that is blowing my mind, you know, that is just really, really beautiful, really thoughtful. And the reason they do it is really important. So this is what Degas said about painting. Painting is easy when you don't know how, but it's very difficult when you do. It's true. And the more you do, the more difficult it becomes because we just, we become more self-critical, but then we see what the possibilities are and it becomes, it's just, it's a hard thing to do. It's a good challenge, but a lot of things that we do in life sort of become easier the more we do them. I think painting is just, I agree with they got that painting uh, is kind of just the opposite. So we dive into many different techniques and styles and ways of working and reasons for doing each of them because each one, each, each way of working, whether it's printmaking or painting or sculpture or collage, all of those sort of things uh, open up new doors for us. And so we do take a serious look at drawing. Uh, everybody that takes the class gets a sketchbook. There's a collage for us. Everyone that, that comes in the program gets a sketchbook. And I ask them to draw on it every day. And we use it in class all the time. Everything starts with a sketch as well. I tell them, and I tell everybody this actually, uh, when we, they wonder about drawing, I said, there's nothing that you can see in this room, nothing that didn't start as a drawing first, either in a sketchbook or on a napkin in a bar. Those light fixtures, somebody drew them as a sketch before anybody ever made the machine to, to bend the metal and everything to do that. Uh, these glasses, those that carton, everything started as drawing. Drawing is so important. Uh, we paint, we make collages, we've even made three-dimensional work. We also do printmaking. And um, there's lots of different ways that we can do printmaking too. Uh, and, but luckily, let's see if we have a picture of it. Well, there's more collage. We're doing all kinds of things. Luckily, 
here in Traverse City at Crooked Tree, we have a really beautiful Conrad press downstairs. It's a medium, small size thing, but it does such beautiful work and such a great resource. But we can do monotypes, we can do dry point etching, we can do lino prints, we can do collagraphs and other sort of printmaking. But it's a, a, it's a great tool that we have here and it's been really exciting to have it in our midst and the, the students love working with it. As you can see my expression there, sometimes things just blow my mind that comes off of the press. It's always a surprise. This is this this part right here. You can see she's just dying to see what that is. It's, it's being revealed. The reveal of a print is the most magical thing, and it never ever gets old. And so it's exciting for them to see them. But sometimes here, when things come out, I can't contain myself. It's really, really, really exciting. Uh, another thing we want to give a full, rich experience here and give artists exposure to all kinds of things that are really important. Like figure drawing, for example. And first off, drawing the, the human form is a staple of academic artistic study since, since the beginning of time. And thank goodness the, the powers that be here at Crooked Tree understand that and want to give that experience. The human form, in my humble opinion, is the example of perfect, design, composition, and balance. And so I don't think there's a better way to understand that, those concepts, than from working from the figure. And that's why even architects, and I have a, a student in class now that wants to be an architect, even architects, when they're in their program, they are, they are part of the program is to take drawing classes and figure drawing classes. So. They will see that, but as high school students to have this experience, they're gonna be such a leg up for that one, one experience when they go into a, a, a figure drawing program in college or art uh, or school. And so I think it's, it's really great. Um, we also have opportunities. Uh, we take opportunities, not a lot, but we take opportunities to get out of the classroom and pause. Oh, these are, these are actually were just drawn this week from a model. And so the students are like so talented, so talented. We, uh, like I say, sometimes we take the opportunity to step out of the classroom, which is important. And so this is a trip that we took actually not very far from here. This is Claude Mills, good friend of mine, fellow artist. His studio is at um, uh, Ninth and Union. And uh, so it was a great opportunity to the students to see a real art studio and to have him explain his process and see what, what's happening. Um, and I also invite you, I'll invite you for Claude. Yes. He would love it. If you drive by and see the open sign or he's got a flag now that says, oh, stop in. He would love you to, to stop in. Another um, uh, time last year, we went to the Denos Museum. Uh, uh, a fellow artist, Tucson Talk uh, artist, Angela being one of them, but this is, uh, uh, I think her name always, what's that? Havani, Havani, Havani Mullen, who was, uh, is a Tucson Talk artist. She had a display of her paintings at, at uh, the Denos, and we went over there, and uh, after she gave her presentation to the public, she so graciously, took our students aside and like met with them and talked to them, just them uh, together uh, and told them a little bit, answered their, some questions. It was really a great dialogue for them to see somebody that has just has a museum exhibition to be able to talk to them. It was uh, a lovely outing. And so to hear an artist talk about their work is so key because it's something that doesn't come naturally to most of us. To make the artwork comes pretty naturally. When somebody asks, what about this part of this painting? What do you like about this? What do you don't like about it? Why did you make it? Sometimes those, those things, there's no words for us naturally to, to uh, say. And so it's really an opportunity and 
we do it a lot in class. I try, I, I try and like talk about, or I do, I talk about their work and try and get them to feedback. And as we, as we talk about our work, it becomes more meaningful and things move in, un, in, in interesting ways that maybe weren't expected once we start dissecting the whys and the wherefores of why they uh, are creating. Um, I want to say we also, this is the next thing that's really important, but what I, what we're going to start doing this year, we've talked about it in the past, but for this year, we are actually going to write artist statements that go with our exhibition. And this is the other thing that's a great opportunity for these, these students. Uh, last year, we did our first one uh, that was an exhibition uh, that was just these students in the gallery upstairs, which is really awesome. Um, just their work and they did everything. They, they designed and titled it. They, with the help of Brian, they, uh, they made the graphics, they installed them, they, they curated the show. They obviously made all the work for the show, but they curated it, they hung the show like hammers and nails in the wall. They actually did all of it. Uh, and even down to like putting the little labels on it. it was, so they got to see the whole process, which is again, something that I, a lot of professional artists never get that opportunity because they you just deliver the artwork and somebody else does that and you show up and magically it's on the wall. Where as it's such a great opportunity for them to like see that and they learn how to respect other people's work and they it's it's really um kind of so rich again it's rich um in the short time that we've been making this program available you know there's the crew from last year uh in the short time that we've been doing this program, uh, we've had some really great uh, successes. Last year, uh, a student, um, to here, she went to, uh, she was accepted and given a scholarship to go to the U of M Stamp Summer Program, which is, I can't believe the opportunity. She was given a studio, and I don't know how many weeks she was there, but there were, there was, she could take classes and had access to this, the studio 24 seven. It's like, who in high school gets that opportunity? I wish I had that opportunity. It was really great. Um, but she got to see more than just a glimpse of, of the big colorful world that's out there. Another student right here. Uh, I just ran into her two weeks ago at the store and was told that, and she told me while she was beaming from a smile from ear to ear that she was accepted as a CCS and given a really great scholarship. So I like take this program as like a real impetus and uh, inspiration to these kids and give them the confidence to even apply and, and others, um, Jaden here, who's also in the program this year, has uh, been in art competitions. She was chosen for the cover of, uh, of a book that was being published and has they've done posters. The fact that they just have the, conf the confidence now to go, go forward and show their art uh, in competitions and that sort of thing, uh, and to try and get into art programs is really special. And I feel super honored to be a part of that. I just want to show you really quickly here some of the exhibition that was up there, a lot of their, their printmaking. You can see the quality of their work, their intention is so strong. Um, and it, intention is one of the things we talk about. And uh, we talk about concepts other than just how to, how to paint or how to print. There's some processes like printmaking that is very process oriented, but at the same time, we talk about the concepts that 
lead up to, to some of these things. And there's just some really beautiful work being done. Anyway, that is, that's it for me right now. Uh, everything that I wanted to say and show to you. And so thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Christy. Uh, but I will answer any questions that anybody has. Yes. Is it open to all, all students, junior, or juniors, and Yes. City wide, so East and West. Oh, oh I, anywhere, okay. anywhere. There's been, there's, we, we have had an eighth grader in this program. Yeah. So the program is down here. Yes. Oh, it's really important. You, you know what? When when the like I said, the kids are in school all day. And when they're in school all day, they're being told, this is this is what we're learning in math and that's what you're gonna do. Or this, you know, they, they're really programmed to do what they're gonna do where when we come here, I like to figure out what they're interested in. If they're interested in going to art school, if they're not interested in going to art school, what they're working on. Um, and I, I, I kind of, I like it when they have, somebody has an idea and I'll just like work with them. So it's really, it's very individual often. We, I will give a project, but if somebody wants to do something slight, a, a variation of that, I can work with that. Luckily they're, they're usually small enough and I'm flexible enough that I, I can let them do that and follow the, a couple different paths. But I think what they wanna do is really important. Uh, and and I feel like what I'm presenting to them, like when I have a concept that, yeah, they should listen to that and pay attention to it. But then I let them riff on that, how, how they would, how they would like. And, and I think we have this mutual respect because of that. And I think that's really, really important. Uh, like I said, I talk to them as if they were a colleague of mine as an artist. And so, um, and whenever I've worked with the, with young people, I think if we approach them, talk to them like adults, like we would like to be talking, it's, it's always better instead of talking down, like I know better than you. Because, because I'll tell you, there's been more than a couple times where, and I will, I will tell them that I am going to steal your idea right now. <laughs> because, it's that what they do sometimes just blows my mind so out of the room that I'm just like, oh my goodness. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use that. Yes. I'm curious about the interaction between students. I sometimes think that artists, especially a, a mature artist, will always be so much working in isolation, but it's so interesting that artists have a chance to work together, but as a young artist. I would think that in school, you're kind of doing your own thing. I'm curious in your program, how do students interact with each other? Are there opportunities for that? Or how does that all go? Uh, and talking about each other's work, stuff like that. It is relevant. And, and, and it's depending on the group, every group, every Every class has a group dynamic, and some of them are a lot more open to talking. The group I have right now is super quiet, but I'm getting them to talk now, and they're talking to each other, and they kind of they work with each other. We don't have like collaborative projects so much, but it's interesting the different the different projects that we do. Some of them kind of scream for collaboration, but um, they're. they're Sort of a camaraderie, sort of a fraternity, if you will, of this this group that they know that they are different than everybody else for some reason, and they it's really nice, you know. They know that the rest of the kids in their art class at school, if they have an art class, they're off watching TV or you know playing video games right now. They're they're together, and so 
they have this sort of like connection to each other and they they're it's really special to see that uh and when we have um it was said uh to me uh not long ago that when you have when you have five artists, five painters working in a studio together, you have five artists working on something. But this is what I love about the printmaking studio down there. When you have five artists in a printmaking studio, you have a community because there's this automatic, as I, you mentioned, uh, how when we're painting, it's often a very solitary sort of personal sort of thing that we're working over here. In maybe don't look at what I'm doing yet, I'm not finished sort of thing. But when we're uh, in a printmaking studio, um, there's these automatic breaks. We ink the plate and we get our, our plate all ready to go and we have to stop. We, we stop because we have to stand up and walk into the other room and go to the, the, the press. And when we're there, there's somebody else on the press. And so we get to stop and watch them do that and watch their work and get excited. I mean, everybody gets excited when the, 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 the print is pulled. And so they have that connection. And then that person is like, wow, that's really cool. And then it says, well, let's see what yours, you know, your plate's there and it's, let's see what yours is. And so there's this, this group think sort of thing, this group excitement. And that just, that brings them together. And I think it's really great when they can form a little community of their, their own. It, it uh, excites everybody and inspires them. Well, Christy could ask the, that question. It's, it's not about the subject. Yeah. So we, we started with the ball and we'll start with the idea of communicating. And you know, we reached out to the students and we right. um, now that you know we got 37 schools here, we're catching the school, so we can serve that next year. So uh, anything anybody can do to help feel free to put right. out there. We do have scholarships as well. It's it is um one of our more expensive classes and still we're kind of who's been able to underwrite this. Um, so it's very, very affordable in terms of the quantity uh, all supplies are included and three hours every week. So when you compare it to another class, it's a steal um, because we can have underwriting, but it is still like intense and it does not fit everybody's budget. So we have scholarships and we Anybody at any time, always, if that's your barrier, please don't break that down. Yes. Okay. Students are working on um, And we're there to find them as they're participating on the application of that sort of thing. Are you sort of like encouraging to expose them to sort of a wide range of different art techniques or? Um, sort of guide them into their own focus. So it's like more specific to what they love or it's a little bit of both. Well, I, both. It's like a really, it's a fine balance because um, we kind of default to what we, we like to do and, and everybody's got a pencil at home and a piece of paper. So you see it and have a lot of drawings, which is great. Everybody likes to see, see drawings and drawings are, um, really a re direct response, but um, having a wide variety of techniques is also good. But I, I try and uh, help them, again, by focusing on what their interest is, I find that they end up making a cohesive body of work in spite of themselves, just because they're encourage I'm encouraging them to work on what's interesting to them, because I don't think subject matter matters at all as far as that goes, but showing a well-rounded like experience that, you know, no, I have done printmaking, I do paint, and look at this, I even made an assemblage, it's that sort of thing, but it always kind of, because uh, I celebrate their creativity in this, and we really constantly are celebrating that. Um, I think the work that they they put together, the body of work is is 
cohesive and makes sense. What is the typical Uh, it, it really, that's really different. And every program kind of wants different sort of things, but I, it, you know, if they can come through this, this program that like this, ideally it can run from, there's two sections from September to the Christmas break and then January to April. Uh, you know, each one of those, if they actually had 10 or 12 pieces that they, that were really good. That's, I feel like that's like awesome. And I think for school, we're usually looking for round pieces where there's a little bit of consideration. And one of them, um, most of the time, needs to be drawing uh, a human figure, mm -hmm. which they don't typically get in the classroom. So we'll look we'll at all of us from here and say, hey, hey you my kid want to figure drawing a class because they now have to show the same thing as a drawing because they have never done it. And our figure drawing actors in our Thursday figure drawing class, there's no instructor. So a uh, high school student really had a lot of home in this situation. Um, where the, the ninth grade of Detroit, they have somebody who's um, giving them suggestions and walking and talking through that so that they can step into one of those factors with an instructor. Yeah. Um, but it is ironic that that is usually part of the portfolio requirements. But most kids it's, don't have that. It's very rarely uh, available. Yes. Certainly, uh, your description of young artists in school and graduation. I was an architect. I there you go. I found that there were very strong characters. In fact, I mentioned a young man who was just starting to do And said, so You will not learn. In your architecture program, how to do a building. That will come later in uh -huh. into practice. And you will learn from the architects of the union. I'm curious whether your students end up being collaborative towards the end of the session. They talk to each other about what they're doing, how they're doing, answer questions. Or you find them so individuals. Um, oh no, they're they're definitely by the end of the program, they're like having a conversation, which is really good. Like I was saying, they they kind of form this little community because they have this this little Tuesday club. In fact, what did they what did they name last last year's thing? Uh, this is six forty seven. This is six forty seven. Right, and so there were six of them. They met from four to seven, and so they they like even titled it about their little their their time and their number, and they really were and are in the group today that is there right now is is a community, and they 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 talk a lot to each other. Now it's very cool to see it. What's that? Continuing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's more girls. <laughs> it is mostly girls. It's mostly girls. Yeah, I kind of, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Which I could never pronounce. Oh, Ryan. Right. Thank you. I said Right, and he would he would uh, drive all the way from like I think he was almost in Kuwait or something. He drove a long way to come down here for it. We had students from Alabama uh, County, where it becomes a problem because they get out of school and then somebody if they if they don't drive has to hustle them down here, get here by four, and and make that return trip. So it can be as much of a commitment for the student as it is for the parent uh, when they're down here. I actually this this session I think only one student drives himself. So that's the thing about right, it. right. Cool. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, we, we, we mentioned the one group we met in the museum was. Yeah. Oh, the woman's name? Oh, ha ha Havani Mullen. Oh, Tusentak. Tusentak is a foundation up in Leland. 
Um, Angela and I have both done residencies there, and that's where we met uh, Avani. Um, it's a it, it's a residency program up there uh, in a beautiful facility that there's all kinds of artists attend attend that one at a time. Uh, but painters, composers, woodworkers. What's that? It sounds native oriented. No, it's not native oriented at all. Tucson talk is actually Swedish or Norwegian. Was it Swedish or Norwegian? For thank you. <laughs> That's what, yeah, it's a Scandinavian word. But uh, yeah, no, it's it's a it's a great program that we've had the some of us have had the opportunity to participate in. And um, so uh, that's how I was made aware of that. And so it was really cool. Is there a limitation on the number of students in any given class? Um, to this point, we have not had a problem with that. Right. Uh, six, I mean, we kind of do some expansive uh, projects. And so six is kind of ideal. We could do eight probably. But six is kind of ideal. The thing that I love about another thing I love about this program is uh, very often I teach other classes here that typically are four weeks. And so just say we're doing printmaking. So you just kind of do like one week monotype, one week dry point, one week lineup, you know, that sort of a thing. And it's just kind of this survey of like, I expose you a little bit where this, the, in this program, it's, there's luxurious time. Not only do we have three hours instead of an hour and a half, but we have months. And so if somebody just like, whoa, I really cannot get enough of this, we they can keep working on that and exploring. They can dive pretty deep into it, which I really love that. That's pretty unusual too. So you could maybe as many as Yeah, comfortably. I mean, it's still kind of, me, I still have to like manage manage them. Luckily, I mean, I've done lots of lots of different um, uh, instructing from classrooms of little kids that are even pre pre middle school to taking adults on big big uh, retreats in the south of France or Italy or something, and. Um, so that's a pretty wide, wide range of things. And so I, I know what it's like to kind of like corral them, but most of the kids I've had in this are not as difficult as the as adults in the let's see the age spread. Uh, the age spread? Um for, for high, school. high school portfolio. It's usually well, how old are eighth graders? Right. And we had one 12th grader who had never really taken art very seriously. The one I wore here uh, during youth art, and then parents immediately came in and said, What can I for? So it's nice that these two things, uh, the high school portfolio and youth art, can, can help validate these students. Well, this youth career. art show is another great in, in, inroad to. The program too because there's lots of lots of opportunities to talk about uh, that sure they track people yeah 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 it's a real reception day. too it's a it's like real it's real grown-up art reception yeah. so yeah, yeah. They get you they gotta get they get dressed up and there's refreshments and they greet everybody it's it's really something and they just they are so excited they They've never experienced that before, you know, to be the stars of the show. It's pretty exciting. Well, it's and pretty they exciting. deserve it. It's been exciting here. Uh -huh. Something burst through the door and maybe a couple of 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. It's just hanging on the wall. You're absolutely right. Okay. Thank you, Rice. Thank okay. you. All right. Recording stopped. Okay. <laughs>